In the fall of 2008, more than 300 scientists calculated what a major earthquake would do to Southern California. We've been conducting a special study of a magnitude 7.8 earthquake on the Southern San Andreas Fault, large enough to potentially damage tall buildings. Fire will be very significant. The definitive scientific report presented to politicians was codenamed ShakeOut. It forecast thousands of deaths and billions of dollars of damage in the city of Los Angeles, which makes it crucial to investigate the most important question, when will the next big earthquake hit the San Andreas Fault? The latest preparations for disaster are the climax of an investigation that started more than 100 years ago. In the aftermath of the great San Francisco earthquake of 1906. The earthquake struck on a Wednesday just before dawn. The ground shook violently for 45 seconds, igniting fires that raged unchecked for the next four days. Twenty-eight thousand buildings, a tenth of the entire city, were destroyed, and more than three thousand people, one in every hundred of the population, were killed. With a magnitude of 7.8, it's in the top 20 of North America's strongest ever earthquakes. The scale of the great San Francisco earthquake shocked the nation. But no one understood what had made the city shake. Native American myths explained earthquakes as shocks from a battle between warring spirits. Latter-day explorers couldn't understand the shocks that destroyed their mission buildings. One Spanish missionary wrote, The earth shook around me from explosions under the ground. 300 years later, and science has still made little progress. Refugees in the ruins of San Francisco still blamed earthquakes on mysterious underground explosions. So just three days after the earthquake, the state of California asked one of the world's most famous geologists, Andrew Lawson from California State University, to investigate what had destroyed the city. He and a team of 25 scientists began collecting damage evidence in the city and surrounding countryside. There were roads that had buckled, rail tracks that had twisted, the most startling evidence of all? That came near the town of Bolinas in Marin County, to the north of San Francisco. This picket fence had an eight-foot gap in the middle. Before the earthquake, it was a solid boundary fence dividing two fields. But when he recreated what had happened, Lawson realized that the land had jolted apart and torn the fence in two. Plotting the evidence on a map around San Francisco revealed a surprising pattern. Because connecting the dots drew a straight line. And at every point, the Earth moved in the same way, on the coast to the north, inland to the south. This line of weakness was the culprit they were searching for. South of San Francisco, the suspect line ran underneath a lake, the Laguna de San Andreas. So now, the earthquake perpetrator at last had a name. Professor Lawson, who a decade earlier had identified cracks in the earth here as a harmless rift, now rechristened it the San Andreas Fault. In modern-day San Francisco, the buildings, the roads, and the railways have long since been repaired. But if you know where to look, evidence of the 1906 quake can still be found. Geologist Charlie Paul follows in the footsteps of Lawson's team, seeking signs of the havoc from 1906. He finds it on the cliffs at Muscle Rock, 
12 miles south of San Francisco. The cliff is not here by accident. There's a very good reason why this cliff is here. Half a mile or so of the shore face apparently fell off in the 1906 earthquake. And if you look down below us, there's a big rotated block um, that's near the present day shoreline. And it is just inboard of the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault is uh, about a quarter of a mile offshore here. And of course, that's one of the major crustal junctions um, on this side of North America. Modern computers can now trace how damage waves spread out across the city. And that pinpoints where the quake originated along the San Andreas. It was offshore, about two miles out to sea from the Golden Gate Bridge. So to continue tracking the fault, the investigation must head out to sea. Marine geologists use remote operating vehicles, mini submarines, to map the seafloor. What you'd see is subtle variations in the topography or topography that would not naturally line up. So there might be a line on the ocean floor that is higher or lower on one side, and you can use various techniques to determine that this actually is a fault instead of some other process. Running south across the seabed, the San Andreas finally runs out of ocean and hits the land. This broken line of rocks stretching in from the sea marks where the San Andreas hits land 12 miles south of San Francisco. And we're here at Muscle Rock, and we're essentially standing on the San Andreas Fault right now. And uh, if there was an earthquake, I don't know what would happen right here, but I wouldn't want to be here. <laughs> This Pacific coastline, where cliffs crumble slowly into the sea, is the boundary between two of the Earth's massive continental plates. Separated by the San Andreas Fault, two vast separate blocks of the Earth's crust lie directly alongside each other. Here, the continent of North America lies slightly on top of the adjacent section of crust which holds the Pacific Ocean. The join can be seen where these lower, darker rocks are overlaid by light-colored sedimentary rocks. These rock types differ by, by uh, more than 100 million years in age. Two rock bodies that uh, are not similar in any way have been brought together. The fault line was exposed to geologists when the cliffs collapsed here in the 1906 earthquake. But back then, nobody understood how and why the two different types of rock were next to each other. Until around 40 years ago, when the answer was finally revealed by the theory of plate tectonics. The theory showed that the Earth's crust consists of separate moving plates on which the oceans and continents sit. Around 200 million years ago, the heavy Pacific Ocean plate collided with North America and started sinking underneath the lighter continent. Professor of Geophysics Mark Zoback studies that process, called subduction, in his laboratory at Stanford University. For many millions of years prior to the existence of the San Andreas Fault, the Pacific plate was subducting beneath North America. The oceanic plate was diving down, and uh, that process went on for, well, well over 100 million years. So a tremendous amount of activity was occurring. As the unstoppable force of one plate met the immovable object of the other, they were forced to change direction. About 20 million years ago, the plate motions were such that the Pacific plate had to start sliding north with respect to North America. And now, you know, the, the principal motion is this sliding process between the two plates. And 20 million years ago, the San Andreas Fault was born.